My father was slain by Lycaros. Now, I sit upon the throne of Hindler. I am sure many of you have concerns about my lack of experience on the battlefield. However, I ask that you believe in the proud blood of the dragon and lend me your support. <laughs> the winged one. For what reason would he come here? How dare you trespass? Leave now or suffer the consequences! Stand down. Lord Gilgamesh, what is the meaning of this? This ring has the power to call forth these visions. Visions? Do you mean those phantom-like soldiers you summon to your side? you give me such a ring? Because I have faith in the blood of the dragon. The whole of Ardra faces a great threat the likes of which has never been seen before. In order to stand against that threat, the great houses of Ardra must come together and fight as one. And you would have me be the one to unite them? Are you saying you are unable? No. If it is to protect Ardra, then I shall gladly do so. Then I place my hope in you. The Winged One has placed the fate of Ardra in my hands. What's more, he has granted me his divine power! We no longer have anything to fear from Lycaros! We march! Let us take Lycaros in one fell swoop! Interesting. So, the Winged One appeared in Heindler, and bestowed Oberon with a ring that has mysterious powers. Yes, Father. The information appears highly credible. Hmm. For someone who is revered as a god to throw his support behind a single kingdom, it is surely a sign that he is up to some manner of wicked scheme. I suspect Heindler will approach Horn in order to better stand against Lycaros. In which case, we shall form an alliance of our own with Leonis and Ovis. Ovis will not be much of an issue. However, Leonis may require some persuasion. And I have just the thing to persuade them. I am all but certain Gilgamesh is colluding with the Church. Yes, Father. I also feel that is the case. What is the Church's objective, then? What meaning is there to their needless interventions and disruption of Ardra's power balance? Sadly must be utilizing his divine favor to repaint Ardra's power map with the aim of becoming the leader of all the land. But without proof to back up such a claim... Oh, I have proof. 
Really? Surely you have also noticed it. Sodaly and Exia have not aged a single day since the time that I was but a boy. For certainty, it must also be the doing of Gilgamesh. And you think that is how Sodaly has ceased to age? A self-appointed messenger of the Divine who has been bestowed with everlasting youth now actively intervenes in the wars of this land. Is this for the sake of peace? Surely not. It has to be a ploy to dominate us. If that is true, then we cannot allow Sodaly to have his way. We need to expose his little secret, and if possible, steal his power away from him. Glacella, will you do this for your father? Leave it to me. You openly accepted my lowly birth and my family, father. My dear Glacella, you are a wise and bold warrior who has inherited my own blood. There is none other worthy of taking the throne of Wazette after me. I have long been prepared to lay down my life for you any time it is required, father. I shall capture Sodaly and bring his secrets to light. I swear it upon my name. The talks have ended. Then we are to side with Wazette and Ovis? Indeed. I have agreed for us to join the Alliance. Our common enemy is the united forces of Heimler and Horn. Hmm. And to further solidify our alliance, King Curie had another manner of proposal. He wants you, Stern, to marry his daughter Glacella. <gasps> what bothers you? It would have been nice to have my brother here right now. So Mont stepped away, did he? This dislike of battle has long been a thorn in our family's side. Up to now, he has only displayed passive resistance. But this time, it's different. What do you mean? Has he not merely hid himself away, as usual? He has run away to join the church. It seems he has been swayed by Sodaly's advocacy of peace, and wishes to aid Sodaly in uniting Ardra. That fool of a boy! The Church maintains a neutral public face, yet is secretly in league with Heimler, and has also won Horn over to its side. According to King Kuri, Sodaly is conspiring with the Winged One to rule all of Ardra. Father, is there no way to avoid this war? I fear it is no longer possible. I see. And when the time comes, allow me to deal with the traitor that is my brother. Your resolve is admirable, my son. Now there's little time to lose. We must see to our preparations for the coming war. Yet another great war that shall divide Ardra in two begins. I devoted myself wholeheartedly in my dealings with the great houses, and yet... Am I at fault here? Was I wrong in my ways? What was it that I lacked? Once this war starts, there will not be a king left who will lend an ear to my words. They will be too busy fighting. And what for? Simply to win? To survive? To kill their enemies? Do I even have a purpose to serve them? <laughs> Why, if it isn't Prince Mont of Leonis? 
I am no longer any Prince of Leonis, I'm afraid. What do you mean? I abandoned my homeland, and hurried to join you here, my lord. And why would you do that? Surely you can guess. Not good ever comes from war. Lord Mont was deeply impressed by those very words of yours. Oh. Lord Mont tried his best to persuade his father of that, but King Alda would have nothing of it. It seems that King Alda believes you and the Winged One are conspiring to rule over all of Ardra. Uh. I am not fond of conflict. But whenever I express that to my father, he invariably dubs me a coward. Father does not understand me. But if the need arose, I would gladly give my life for the sake of my homeland. I do not lack for resolve. It's just... This war is not a battle to protect our people. It is nothing more than bloodshed to sate the cravings of men. I cannot ask the members of my division to throw away their lives for such a cause. This is why I have come to you, Lord Sodaly. My dear Lord Mott. Sorry, but I'm not sure we have time to be chatting. I heard report of Wizette's forces heading for this church. We should hurry, and move on while we still can. But I cannot run away and leave the villagers here to fend for themselves! We tarried too long. We should probably assume reinforcements will keep on coming as well. I fear so. We need to break through this vanguard and escape the church. Then we can try to make our way out of the village. Please do not stray from our side, Lord Sadly. Understood. <gasps> Glacella! It appears I misjudged you, Mont. I did not care that you hated battle, but to abandon your homeland and run away to join the church. <laughs> so you are not even going to attempt to justify your actions. Hand over Sodaly or else! Lord Mont! I shall not back down, Lilith. Not ever. I shall hold you to those words, brother. Stern, I can handle this in your stead. You needn't worry for me, Glacella. My brother and I have known this day would come. Isn't that right, Mont? It's how it has to be. Lord Mont, you are brothers. This isn't right. Step aside, Lilith. But Lord Mont... As you command. I guess this means we really are no longer citizens of Leonis. Stern. There is naught to worry about. I know my brother's skills with a sword better than anyone. I assure you, there is no conceit in my words. In truth, I all but tremble at the prospect of finally fighting my brother for real. Let us do this! Now to settle things, once and for all, I shall not be beaten! <clears throat> well fought, brother. If only we could... 
could have fought side by side against the great houses instead. Suddenly, That leaves just you! It would seem this is as far as it goes. Amulus? I'm sorry. Did you have another of your premonitions? Hexia is in danger. No! Then we had better deal with matters here swiftly. So the wire puller finally shows himself! I am sorry. But we do not have time for this. I shall wipe away our foes, so that we may return to the laboratory without delay. Is too fierce. Exia. Suddenly. What happened here? Exia. Hexia, wake up! Hexia, no! Suddenly, is Hexia all right? Oh no. If only I had stayed with her, this wouldn't have happened. No, Amnilus. You are not to blame. This is all his fault. His fault? <sighs> Do you intend to stop me? Hmm. Or are you going to remind me about turning the other cheek? Who do you mean when you say, it is all his fault? What good would it do you to know? Would you lend me a hand in seeking my revenge? I cannot help you fight a personal grudge. We are in a position where we must be open to all possibilities. We cannot show favoritism to one military force over all others or harbor animosity to them either. A personal grudge? Are we not comrades? Fighting on the same side for the future of Ardra? Please do not try to stop me. Sodily. You mean to remind me that if we turn back time, then none of this will have happened. And we could do it all over again. If only we do not keep our memories of it. No. His sins will not be erased. He will not get away with this so easily. I am going to punish him for what he has done. And I do not care whether you reset time so that it never happened. Exia's suffering and sorrow and my wrath. I shall carve them into his very soul. So get out of my way! Why didn't you stop him? If Sodaly becomes consumed with vengeance, he will no longer be able to unify the populace. You can still stop him before it's too late. No, we should turn back time. 
You are probably right. Doing so will certainly undo Exia's death. But what will become of Sadali's feelings? What was the goal of the enemy who attacked this laboratory? And what manner of plan have they put into motion unbeknownst to us? If we do not learn these things, our future efforts may yet again be impeded. Then you mean for Exia to keep her memories? Yes. It will put her through considerable duress, but it is the only way to learn what exactly happened here. I trust you do not object. I guess there is no other way. But still... I think we should at least do it before Sonali bloodies his hands with anger and hatred. Even if we make it so that none of it ever happened, I do not want him to fall to such a place. Ah. Another premonition. <sighs> what did you see? Nothing. Just darkness, without the slightest trace of light. Is it your head again? Does it hurt? Yes, but it feels like the worst has passed. Something is not right. We were meant to give only one ring to the King of Heindler, so that the major powers would come together under his leadership. Why did we suddenly abandon that plan before any conclusion was reached? When I asked Gilgamesh, he would not answer me. And now you suddenly suffer from what appear to be some kind of seizures that steadily grow worse. Tell me, Exia, what has happened that I do not know about? Nothing. Nothing at all. You lie. There is something you are hiding from me. You worry too much. I am just as fine as ever. What is it you aren't telling me, Mexia? Oh, there you are. Oh, Amnilus. I have some good news. I'm thinking we should build a grand church on this spot. Why here, of all places? Well, I was thinking that it's a little risky leaving the laboratory so accessible. If we build a church over it, it will make it far more difficult for anyone to get near the time machine. I see. That is a splendid idea. I am glad you find joy in the prospect. Perhaps you could speak to the villagers about it and have them begin work tomorrow. Very well. Why is Amulus eager to build a church here all of a sudden? Hmm. If we build a church, it will make it difficult for anyone to get near the time machine. Did somebody find this place when I was not aware? When I was not aware... No. Perhaps 
I was aware, but forgot it ever happened. Wait, that's something I felt Exia knew, but I did not. A and then her headaches, they could be the result of only one thing. Good heavens. How has your health been since we last spoke? Okay, I guess. I am sorry to have put you through that. We needed your memories kept intact in order to understand what happened here. And thanks to that, we learned that Kuri raided this laboratory with hopes to steal your anti-aging bracer. I knew he was cunning, but even the bracers did not slip his attention. Yet that was not due to any error on the part of us four. Which means Kuri may indeed uncover the secret of the Bracers once again. There is one thing that concerns me. I fear that, sooner or later, Sadali shall realize that I have memories of my own death. No matter how hard I continue to try and hide it from him, he will eventually notice even the littlest of signs. And once he does realize, I worry that it will become a cause for division between you and he. <sighs> Long ago, I lost someone that I cared for deeply. Oh? Even now, the image of her dying face sometimes haunts my dreams. I do not wish Sadali to suffer his own unforgettable torment any further. Any further? You mean, he has suffered my loss before? Yes. Several times, in fact. You do not need to worry about us. <sighs> we have remained resolute since the day we left Tessera. That we no longer live for ourselves, but only to help others. We knew that we would surely be hurt along the way. But I have Sadali to support me, just as he has me. So fear not. We shall overcome any hardship that comes our way. My apologies, nonetheless. Do not worry. We will be all right. However, I think it better we say nothing of this to Sadali. Or Amnelis, for that matter. So you want to bestow three rings this time. One each to Wazette, Rundal, and Horn? I guess that, if we create a three-way deadlock, it may prevent one country from getting out of hand. With the major powers keeping each other in check, they may come to depend on you all the more as a mediator. That said, I do not think we can expect much from furnishing Wazette with a ring. Perhaps it would be wiser to confer just two rings, one on Rundal and one on Heinler. <sighs> or we could try entrusting rings to Horn and Ovis, then have them keep Likaros and Wazette in line, while making contact with Heinler. No. Let us follow my plan to bestow a ring upon each of Wazette, Rundle, and Horn this time. So... My opinions are not worth lending an ear to? This is not true. Then does that mean we have already tried the option I proposed? And I merely have no recollection of us doing so? What is it you mean to say? <clears throat> Nothing at all. Forget what I said. We have asked the villagers to build a church here, so construction work should soon begin. I see. But that alone may not provide the momentum required. Actually, 
I am thinking that once I have enough churches and believers, I might make for Wazette. Do not tell me you intend to wait until Cory's generation comes about, so that you may utilize his influence. It almost sounds like you are telling me not to attempt it. Kuri is a cruel and cunning king, that is for sure. However, we cannot ignore the ability he has to create a strong, unified Wazette. Were you not once pursued by the forces of Wazette and nearly killed? Yes, I remember it well. They chased me to a remote village, where they did, in fact, kill me. Why? Do you think I might be so foolish as to repeat the same mistake? You must proceed carefully, is all I am saying. I am fully aware of that. Oh, Sadali. Why do I feel so uneasy about this? you here, priest. Wazet is one of the great kingdoms of Eastern Ardra. Your actions have repercussions on the fates of many citizens. I beg you, for the sake of peace, please refrain from carrying out futile wars. Curse my tenacity if you must, but it shall not stop me from pleading this cause to you again. Again? This is the first pleaded your cause to me. Of course, yes. This is the first time we have met, indeed. Hmm. I kowtow at your feet. And I do so without speaking any falsehoods. I beg you, please, for the sake of Ardra. Use your power to put an end to these needless wars. The answer is no. Oh. Even though I accord you every courtesy, your majesty? Do you really think the likes of you could move me, the great King Kuri, with whatever piffling words you regurgitate? Seize him! What is the meaning of this? <sighs> you shall tell me why you are really here. Huh? It is as I said. I simply wish that Wazette ceases carrying out futile war. <sighs> if you do not wish to give me a straight answer, then so be it. I am answering you honestly, your majesty, without any falsehoods. Then allow me to ask a different question. What shall you do once our wars are no more? Do you think we shall all live happily ever after? Well... Uh... Ah, suddenly you lose your way with words. You and the Winged One are scheming some kind of treachery together. Admit it. No! That is not true! A moment ago, you said that you speak without any falsehoods. Those words themselves were not the truth, were they? <sighs> Answer me, priest! Very well. I shall tell you the honest truth. There appears to be a great threat, sealed away in a cavern. Beneath Leonis. Oh, a great threat, you say? Now things are getting interesting. And what exactly is this great threat that you speak of? I do not know. I tell the truth. 
Gilgamesh has not explained that much to me. And what does the Winged One intend to do with this great threat? He says we must defeat it. Defeat it? Yes. Lest that threat devastate all the lands of Ardra and beyond. In order to eliminate this great threat, we need to unify the great houses of Ardra to stand together. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> How very interesting, indeed. Interesting? I have seen through your little ploy. As long as this great threat, or whatever Gilgamesh calls it, exists, he is not able to lay hold of Ardra. And thus he intends to use us to eradicate that thorn in his side. No! You are dearly mistaken! Lashella! Are you there? Here I am, Father. The priest says there lies a cavern under Leonis. Take Akito and investigate it at once. Understood, Father. But what shall we expect to find in there? Some manner of great threat, it seems. Find it, and release it from its seal. <sighs> you cannot be serious! You shall doom us all! Let us use that so-called threat to wipe out Likaros and Horn. Once those two kingdoms are raised, there will be none left to stand in the way of Wazette. As you command, Father. You mustn't do this! Kuri! That is the great King Kuri to you. You said to me, if you had come kowtowing at my feet without speaking falsehoods, that even I would have lent you my ear. You don't remember. Or rather, you don't know that you told me. But you did. Word for word, that is what you said to me. And thus, I came here before you. Yet you... You merely string a bunch of perfunctory words together to fit the then and there. Do not even realize how cruel and cold-hearted your actions are! What in heavens are you blabbering about, priest? You do not understand. <laughs> but how could you? Hmm. I finally realize now. No matter what words I use to try and convince you, you will never comprehend. It is useless to waste words on one such as you. I should have delivered my message with force from the outset. Force? <laughs> I shall show you force, priest! Ah, impossible. You make light of me as a mere creature. But I have lived many times. No, dozens of times. Longer than you. And I have grown. Now I shall cast out the corruption that defiles your flesh! Set out for Wazette, 
I dedicated myself to helping the believers at the church. But I was so worried about you that I could not concentrate on my work. And then I had a premonition, and I saw you. In that glimpse of the future, your face. It was dyed crimson with the blood of others, and you were smiling. I could not fathom what in the heavens had happened. So I came here with Gilgamesh. Please, Sadali, what happened here? Sadali? Was this your doing? It was quite the simple feat, if you must know. As we repeated the cycles of time, my soul and my command over magic developed oh so rapidly. In the end, it seems I did not have to use words to convince these people at all. The answer was force. Why, even men like this can be made to listen with the application of a little force. Do you truly mean the words you speak? <laughs> answer me, Sodaly. What would you have had me do? If I had merely been insulted, I would have endured it! But this was no mere insult! He meant to end my life! The pain I felt, and the fear! Can you even begin to imagine what it was like? Oh. I approached Kuri in good faith. But he... He... He was not but a wretch. I did exactly what he had asked of me. I cowed out at his feet without speaking falsehoods. And yet... Despite that... Kuri had no intention of lending his ear to my petition from the outset! You expressly chose me to do your bidding! Yet what use am I? Do you even need one such as I to begin with? Is there really any necessity to seek audience with men like Kuri? To be obsequious to them with fake smiles and fawning pleasantries? Is this what you chose me for? Is this the role of your divine messenger? Huh. I sense a disturbance. Sonali, what else have you done? I was all but tortured by that rotten king. The pain was too much, and I broke. I told him the truth. That there is a great threat lurking in a cavern beneath Leonis. Did Wazette dispatch soldiers to go search for it? Yes, I believe so. We had best head there at once. <laughs> I am coming with you. But you are in no state to... I need to reap what I have sown.
so, it has awoken. Are you okay? You look ghastly pale. It is nothing. I shall be alright. It appears the forces of Wazette breached the cavern where the Realm Scourge was sealed and awoke it. So its instincts have reacted to the scent of their blood, allowing it to break through its bonds and ravage its way here to the surface. Now none will be able to stop it. I... I shall fight it. To what end? But it's suicide! The moment you use that crystal of yours, it will all be as if none of this ever happened. Hence, you can afford to be callous in the way you treat us all like pawns. Huddly. You are God, so perhaps it is only natural for you. But I am a mere mortal. When I see people get hurt, lose all hope, and call out for help, I cannot turn my back on them. Sodaly, wait! I shall go with you! If you wish to use your crystal, then by all means, do so. But I choose to fight. Even if it is a battle, I know I cannot win. Poor Sodaly. It is my fault for not guiding him on the correct path. I wish to spare these two of the great burdens we continue to force upon them. Then should we consider removing their anti-aging bracers? That may be what it takes. Sodaly and Exia belong to this land of Ardra. Merely having a few people who live forever exist here is enough to upset the natural order of things. I shall not allow you to do that. <laughs> you were hasty to assume I was dead. Let me take care of your wounds. That will not be necessary. But subtly. Do you intend to abandon us? That is not what motivates me. But the result will be the same regardless. Uh. I care not if you use the crystal to turn back time. But no longer will I be forced to redo my life each time you do so. Even if that very fact, too, can be made to have never happened. We are not pawns used to bring about your preferred future. We are humans who are living in the here. And now? Do you regard me with contempt? Contempt? Heavens, no. I still believe you are God. I simply no longer have any interest in worshipping you any further. Eventually, that will lead you to desire to kill me. Instead. <laughs> what? You 
cannot tell Sadali that, Gilgamesh. I care not any longer. What do you mean that I shall desire to kill you? You have turned on me with intent to kill in the past. Several times, in fact. Not that you remember, or should I say know of, any of those times. Is that so? So, you have indeed been turning back time on us, without our knowledge. Fear not, for I understand. Despite my outbursts, you have faith in what I can do for our cause. Which is why you made it so none of this ever happened. But why do you share this with me now? Is it because you intend on making it as if this very conversation never happened as well? You have the right to choose. The right to choose what? If you wish to remember what happened during this cycle, then grab onto my ankle. 